Our third week on the Hermitcraft server started with a whole bunch of pretty normal Hermitcrafty stuff. For example, chickens were roasted to perfection in our newly installed chicken factory, while diamonds were being yoinked out of the bottom of Minecraft during numerous early morning branch mining sessions. And when I say early, I mean early, my dudes. Much time was also spent over at the recently opened Enderman farm to gather oceans of XP to upgrade our tools and to make a bunch of extra books as backups for, well, you know, inevitable derp death. And with our freshly minted diamonds, we visited some of the shops popping up on the server and even managed to buy our very own Elytra from Impulse's, uh, beautiful shop called Eyesore. Don't tell Impulse, but probably the ugliest building I've ever seen in Minecraft. We also spent more time than can be considered normal boating around with a chicken friend. And we even managed to do some proxy chat trading with one of the new awesome members of Hermitcraft Season 8. Hey Jay, what's happening? Hey. Man, I was just taken in the view. This place is looking amazing. You like it? Yeah. Thank you. So peaceful, isn't it? It is very peaceful. It's very foliage -y. It is, <laughs> yep. Very, very green. We've got the spore blossoms creating yeah. all kinds of atmosphere. Oh, wh what are these little particle thingies coming down? Yeah, they come from these big flowers here. Oh, these thingies. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Wait, how do you get those? So you af you craft them out okay. of the drip leaf. And well, you need allium too, which is kind of a pain. But... Oh, you need allium too? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that case, because I'm looking for this drippage stuff, mm -hmm. this is what I need this in my life, Jim. Look at it. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. It is very cool. I agree. Yeah. It's my favorite thing they've added, I think. So, let's talk. Mm -hmm. I, I need mm -hmm. to pick pick up whatever is required to make that. Okay, well, original price was three diamonds for the drip leaf. Okay, I'm happy with that. Boom. Right, right. Alliums. And this, you can bone meal this. Oh! So... So you only have need you one. Only, you only really need one, so okay. there's there's one. All right, so you know what? That's perfect. Deal done. Alliums cannot be bothered to go find alliums, TBH. So I can give you a couple of the alliums that I have if you want. Amazing, for diamonds. amazing. Well, what yeah, let's keep it that? to three diamonds. Let's let's you know let's keep it nice oh and gosh. even. Even oh Stevens. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Okay. And then there, there was go. one other bit. All right. Was I have there? five of these on oh. me. Do you want five of these? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, I can make that happen. There you go. Um, five at, let's see, five at three diamonds a pop. Boom. Oh, thank you. You have literally this saved is the most me diamonds like diamonds I've ever had. <laughs> you saved me so many hours of grind for all of this these bits. So totally well, worth it. I hope it. that you enjoy those. Ooh, hold on, hold on. I haven't tried this yet. This is new, also, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a whole parkour course below if you want to fully try it out. Nailed it! Doc's not going to be happy. Those are actually his diamonds, but don't tell him if he comes around, okay? Right, I <laughs> will not tell Doc. Thank okay. you for that. <laughs> Jim, thank you so much for all the stuff. We'll see you later. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. See you, Jim. Oh, also, welcome to Hermitcraft Season 8! <laughs> Thanks, totally Ren! Totally that one. And by the way, we're not the only ones who've made some brilliant progress this week. Our base buddy, DocM77, has been hard at work emptying out the Octospawner chunk that we managed to generate in Episode 1. And from the look of this monstrosity, we're well on our way to potentially having one of the best mob spawners on the server. Remember when I said this week started off pretty normal? Well, things quickly took a turn for the weird, when one day I popped over to our budding goat empire to make sure the goat and pole we made last episode was doing its goatee business, and on the way over, I quickly realized that shenanigans were afoot. Our glorious goat army was now upside down for some reason, and to my shock and horror, I soon discovered the Gotem Pole was now at the bottom of a Gotem Hole! Oh, the humanity! But that's not all, my dear friends from all over the interbubs. Oh no, it gets worse. Upon examining the Botum Pole more closely, I was devastated to discover one of our glorious goats hanging precariously above the Botum Hole. And should his lead snap, 
our goatee friend would end up in the void. Oh, the humanity of it all. Well, it soon became clear to me, my friends, that my unquenchable desire for retribution has put hundreds of innocent goatees in serious jeopardy of ending up in the hideous void that is the Botan Pole. And at this point, we must ask ourselves a very serious question, fellow members of the Goat Empire. Is retribution worth the lives of hundreds of innocent goatee compadres? I think not, Cybergoats. I think not. Something must be done. The goats must be saved. The empire of the goat shall retreat. Greetings, cyberdogs and citizens of the interbubs. This is Ren Diggin' in now. Okay, coming at you in another Minecraft episode for Rom, the Hermitcraft server. We're kicking things off today, my friends, from Go to Empire Bay, where we're in the middle of an emergency rescue effort to save our glorious goat army from ending up at the bottom of the freaking Botan Pole. Now, the plan to rescue our goatee friends is a fairly simple one. The Botan Pole people have started digging a Gotham hole beneath the Gotham Pole. And I assume their plan is to eventually dig down into the void to get rid of the Gotham Pole once and for all. Therefore, our mission today is to yoink the Gotham Pole out of the Gotham Hole before the hole can be excavated down into the void by the Botan Pole people. And of course, as this is Hermitcraft, we're going to be doing this goat yoinkage in style with what can only be described as, well, a rather crabtastic mechanical walking pirate ship rigged to transport goat and pulse. Uh, or something. Now the concept behind this build is a weird one. The pirate ship is going to hoist the goat and pole out of the hole using a powerful redstone contraption that Doc is going to build in his next episode. Although after I finished building the pirate ship above the goat and pole yesterday, I soon realized we're going to need to build a few islands so the legs of the mechanical walking pirate ship have something to stand on. As per usual, this build has gone from relatively simple to a whole bunch of grind this week, as before we can get working on the crab legs of the ship, we need to do a bit of terraforming around Goat Empire Bay to ensure our walker isn't just floating on the water. On top of that, we're going to have to try and make these islands blend in with the environment so that it doesn't look super janktastic. And we've got three legs that are going to end up in the water, so that's three islands we need to build today. And well, speaking of the legs, this build is such a weird concept that I had to spend a couple of days this week in creative just to try and figure out what this walking pirate ship is actually going to look like. And as you can see on my creative world, it's looking pretty awesome. I mean, the challenge now is to try and build that thing in creative in vanilla here in Goat Empire Bay and then for Doc to try and hoist the goat and pole out of the hole. Um, yeah, things are getting pretty weird in season eight, but I'm all for it. It's time lapse time, baby. And that's the first leg of Krabby Jones's Galleon completed, my dudes. And I gotta say, it is turning out pretty awesome. 
I'm really, really happy with these new 1.17 blocks. We've got the deep slate, which gives that really awesome dark metallic look. Goes so nicely with the Blackstone too. And of course, the copper is really, really important in this particular build. We've got these joints uh, at the knee and at the ankle and the crabby claw of the galleon looking absolutely awesome. And uh, well, it's actually the wrong color copper at the moment, but we're going to have to wait a few hours for it to go green. But yeah, the galleon is coming together. The crab galleon of awesomeness. And, uh, or I guess the Crab Galleon of Goat Rescue. We're going to be yoinking the uh, goat and pole out of that hole when this thing is completed. Although I still have three more legs to make. And, well, it took most of the morning to make the islands for the legs. Those are now done, though. So I just got to make three more of these things. But, dudes, I kind of want to take a very quick break from this project. Because there are a couple of distractions I want to take a look at. While I've been out here, I've spotted a various number of interesting things. Number one, upside down pigs. Uh, it seems like everything around here is actually upside down, which is hilarious. Uh, does anybody know why everything is upside down? Uh, this is really, really confusing me. There's an upside down dog over there, for example. Very strange. Uh, but what I did want to check out is this massive egg thing over here. My dudes, this looks awesome. Uh, I believe this is a new mini game that Grian is starting on the server, and I don't know much about it. This is a potato vendor, it looks like it. I don't have any diamonds on me right now, unfortunately. I probably should have thought about that before this distraction, but yeah, here we are inside the egg. There's diamonds, there's boards. Welcome to Teg, the spiritual successor to Tag. This game is about the famous dragon egg, okay? Uh, that is quite a lot of reading. The idea is simple. All you have to do is be the owner of the egg. The current owner of the egg must incorporate it into their house. You can do this subtly or very subtly to avoid the egg being found. The other player's job is to find and take the egg back. Okay, that sounds simple enough. I, we're talking about the dragon egg here, right? I'm assuming. There are some additional rules that are disclosed in the Hermitcraft Discord. The first to own the egg for 500 Minecraft days is the winner and claims all diamond blocks inside the egg. Green will track the game and has final say on points and rules. Okay, so I guess it's like tag, except we got to take the egg. The egg is the flag that we got to hide. Uh, where do we find the egg? I'm assuming somebody who is playing already has the egg, or today is actually the 4th of July, so I guess the game starts today. Um, right, I need a diamond block, I'm in. Tag sounds awesome. Plus, I need to head home anyway, because we need a few more supplies to complete Krabby Jones's Galleon over here, guys. So I'll tell you what, I'm gonna head back over to the chicken farm, get myself some diamonds, and can I just say how amazing it feels to have an Elytra in Season 8? Oh man, this is... This is playing Minecraft now. We be cooking with crabby gas today, my dudes. This is, this is beautiful. All right, diamond block acquired, my dudes. Let's go and plug it into the egg so that we can get ourselves a part of this game. Very, very excited to see where this goes. No idea uh, where the egg is right now. Assuming Green still has the egg, he's going to be starting it. Nice. All right, back to Krabby Jones's galleon, my dudes. I've got three more legs to make. <laughs> Wish me luck, man. This is probably gonna take me all night does he like get uh upset if he's not by you yeah well he like sits under my feet but when he hears something outside like a car or a truck or something he's still you know he still gets like a little oh, bit okay. upset yeah uh, he's upset or just excited excited he's a, he's a rescue dog so um he's been, he was in the kennel for like six months and they found him he was a stray so somebody just dumped him in a field when he was you know, six months old. So he's he's a bit mm. traumatized at the moment, you know. Yeah. But um, we we're bringing him back. We're sorting him out, slowly but surely, aren't we, boy? His name is Obi Wan Alfonso Kenobi, <laughs> Master Jedi. Alfonso Kenobi. <laughs> yeah. Is there a short for of that? Obi. <laughs> Just Obi. Okay. Yeah. That, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but awesome. All right, Ethan, thank you so much, dude. That, that's yeah, great. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. That is Sa awesome. Saved me a bunch of time there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And You got a raid coming, by the way. Oh, again. So I'll, <laughs> I'll be out of here. All right. <laughs> Cheers, dude. Seriously? Every single sheep? Every single cow? Upside down? 
There's a whole bunch of sheep legs sticking up. Oh my goodness, this is, this is absolute chaos. I mean, not even Doc's mule has escaped the shenanigans of the upside downer hermit, whom I would very much like to know the identity of. Does anybody know who's turning all of the animals upside down? It's hilarious. Well, at least the parrot survived, although is it just me or has that parrot changed color? Uh, hmm. Anywho's my dudes, it's the next day in real life and um, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. Uh, the good news is the pirate crab ship is complete. It's looking absolutely insane. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like in a second. The bad news is this week I've spent so much time working on the crab that, well, I've kind of neglected one of the projects we opened in the last episode and that is of course the sewer beneath our RV base. Yeah, this is about as far as I've got, guys. Ten chests. Um, yeah, listen, this is going to be a slow project, okay? We're going to do this one over time. We'll probably do a lot of it on stream, too. So, for now, I just kind of want to ignore that I said I was going to do this last episode, and then I didn't do it this episode, because, you know, that's what we hermits always seem to do. You know, we say we're going to do one thing, and then we do another. But I tell you what, guys, let's focus on the good news and take a fly over to Krabby Jones's Galleon, which I finished off finally last night around midnight. We should see it coming into view now, and there it is. A giant walking pirate ship looming over the Botan Pole, people. And I gotta tell you, dudes, I have really, really enjoyed this build this week. It is, it's one of the weirdest things I've ever made in Minecraft, but I don't know. I, there's just something about it that's so cool. I just love seeing these legs looming over this area. And uh, there's a couple of interesting things you should know about uh, this ship. This pirate ship itself is actually a, basically a direct copy of a Minecraft pirate ship. Uh, this design was taken from the pirate ships that you find underwater and I spruced it up a little bit, fixed it up a bit and adapted it of course into this mechanical walking beast. And we've made great use of some of the new blocks in 117 too. I'm particularly fond of the copper bits that we've got here, these joints and so on. And as you can see, over time, these are slowly changing color. The, it almost makes it feel like this thing has just climbed out of the ocean, right? The copper is now oxidizing. It's changing color. And well, next episode, all of this copper will probably be green. And of course, one of the important things was to try and make sure this walker was walking on something. And I successfully managed to do a little bit of terraforming here. We extended these beaches all the way to, uh, well, inside toward the Gotem Pole. Uh, to give the legs something to stand on. Although, you know, a lot more work needs to get done on these islands. Uh, they're looking a little bit janky, but for now it's looking really, really good. Uh, there's a couple of other cool things about this this walker. It actually has an engine room. I don't know if you can see it in there, but um, we've got some smoke coming out of the engine and uh, some fire going on, right? So something needs to give this thing fuel. So we have some sort of, I don't know, soul fire engine that is firing up this huge, huge walker. And uh, it's slowly but surely creeping over toward the boat and pole people. Uh, it may look like it's attacking, right? With the goat empire sail, but actually it's defending. It's gonna be hoisting the goat and pole out of the goat and hole. And that's going to be a task for Doc in his next episode. I'd like him to come up with some sort of a redstone contraption that is going to literally hoist the Gotem Pole all the way up and attach it to the walker, which should be very interesting to watch. I, I'm very look, very much looking forward to see if Doc can actually get that done. Uh, but yeah, the build is basically done, which means my brain is now yogurt and uh, I need to basically start editing this video to get it out to you guys. So I think we'll probably say goodbye from here. Uh, but I did want to take a look at it from a distance, from in, more in particular from the Botum Pole itself. And yeah, I mean, that's looking crabtastic. It's looking quite intimidating too. <laughs> this massive giant pirate ship crab walking slowly towards this area. I mean, hopefully it will instill some fear in our boat and pole people. Um, but more importantly, we're going to save our goats. And I don't know if you guys can hear my dog right now, but it's probably time for me to say goodbye. Looks like he needs to go outside for potty. So guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the build and uh, we will see you again very, very soon as we fly way above and see our beautiful walker disappear in the distance. Thanks for watching, guys. Rendigity Dog uh, signing out from the Goat Crab Ship of Awesomeness. We'll smell you all in the next episode.